Very good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm here today to talk to you about small satellite modeling and defender software. My name is Dr. Kyle Murbach, and I'm from the University of Alabama in Huntsville Center for Cybersecurity Research and Education. And this project has been in partnership with the U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command, and we're excited to share with you what we've been doing the last few years. So a little bit about myself. I'm a uh, principal research engineer at UAH CCRE. I've been there since 2020. I'm a, I've been a PI and SME on various research projects and a variety of different topics, ranging from malware analysis, tool development, reverse engineering, and vulnerability analysis. That can be in of various uh, topic areas, including satellites. I have nine years of prior experience as a cybersecurity researcher and software reverse engineer. I got my PhD in cyber operations at Dakota State University and my BS and MS in computer security at Rochester Institute of Technology. I'm the uh, technical director of the space testing and resiliency simulation team at CCRE where we did a satellite project. So a little bit about the project itself. It's been going on since fall of 2019. We have had a wide variety of student teams coming in and out throughout the last five years. So as they come in, they work on various parts of the project, and then they may either move on to other projects or they graduate, and then we hire on additional students and try to continue the work. So as a director, I've been the continuity throughout that to make sure that we continue to make meaningful progress. Here is a, a brief list of major project milestones that we've achieved over the last five years. And um, we'll go over each of most of these in the slides coming ahead. We'll talk about how we identified and acquired hardware and software to configure a small satellite test bed to model a real world functioning satellite system. How we try to test for vulnerabilities and create different attack scenarios and come up with ways to harden satellite system to protect from cybersecurity threats. We developed Small Satellite Defender, which is a software. We'll talk more about that later. And we were able to go to the U.S. Cyber Command Cyber Recon Symposium in Dreamport, Maryland. And we also were able to experiment this Small Satellite Defender software on a actual satellite orbiting Earth with Lockheed Martin. And we are currently working on assembling and experimenting with TubeSat kits, and we're hoping to continue our efforts there with Small Satellite Defender on those TubeSats. So the, the purpose of this research project was to come up with a test bed of a small satellite system to be able to perform different research experiments to inform how to better defend satellites from potential cybersecurity threats. As you may know, launching satellites in space has become much more affordable these days with SpaceX launching constantly all these rockets, which is great for our industry. We're able to affordably launch a satellite and that leads to the need of being able to ensure we harden those satellites from potential threats. So in this test bed that we were developing, we wanted to make it as real world as possible. So our goal was to be able to operate a payload of some sort. It could be either imagery, GPS or communications, and then to have the underlying critical infrastructure to support ground station communication, orbit movement and positioning, as well as data processing and battery charging and pointing towards the solar panels to get that charge. And by developing that, we would be able to replicate a real world system. So in the very beginning of this project, we spend time researching, trying to figure out what the best avenue was to build this test bed. And we were looking at the Raspberry Pi 4 as well as the Pi Cubed version 4 as well. We found that the Raspberry Pis were relatively easy to, to acquire, obviously, everyone's badges. 
is fairly inexpensive. S simple to modify payloads and add payloads. There's a lot of pre-existing libraries already configured. There's been a lot of research done out there in the community. Whereas the PyQ boards, they were developed to be nano satellites. And we found it very difficult to be able to write to the boards. We, there was very little documentation available. And unfortunately, when we acquired that hardware, it was end of support. So we shipped it back to the uh, Raspberry Pi platform moving forward. So this is an illustration of what we were trying to achieve with these Raspberry Pis. We would have a satellite and the ground station. With the satellite, we have a payload. Which in this case, we went with a camera where we can take pictures. We have antennas on both the satellite and ground station. We're able to communicate to each other, send commands. And as you can see, we had a encasement and some ports to be able to connect with it, with a laptop, to be able to upload code, configure things, and so forth. And this is the uh, real world image of what we created in the lab. We were able to replicate that diagram. And essentially, uh, the camera, the radios, and everything we ordered and put together, preloaded libraries. So for the camera, we went with the uh, Aoken Raspberry Pi cameras capable of taking very low quality images, but just for the purposes of showing that you can use payloads with the system we were setting up. And it, that uses pre-assisting Raspberry Pi libraries. We also use the RM or FM's 69 ACW radios that attach directly to the GPIO header on the Raspberry Pis that function at two different frequencies. It had a decent range. We were able to go as far as 100 meters without any problems. We never had any need to go any further than that for the purposes of this project. And for the communication with these radios that we had in place, we set up a TCP style communication between the ground station and satellite. The satellite would interface with cesium. We'll talk more about that later. And then we, we would simulate this orbit window. And then when it would be in the communication window, the satellite would send data to the ground station based on its previous tasking. And then they would listen for additional tasking from the ground station. And we would control different states for the satellite with the first byte of the data transmitted as an identifier. So in this custom communication setup that we had, we had uh, various bytes. We would let the satellite know this is the end of the stream, or this is the start of a specific stream for pictures, or if it's a task, or if it's for a configuration of the satellite. We also acquired the SEMS hat add on board. This was originally developed for the International Space Station by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. This allowed us to have a array of sensors with a variety of different things, temperature, humidity, and the big thing for us was the gyroscope, being able to position the satellite to be able to figure out which way it's facing, which is really important for yaw and axis, making sure the satellite doesn't spin out and make sure that it's orienting the solar panels in the right direction to get the energy to charge the batteries. With this add-on board, there are a wide variety of different functions available with those sensors. We would want to position the payload in the right direction to be able to take pictures of Earth. And we would also want to protect the camera from not facing the sun, which can burn the image sensor. We would orient the solar arrays using those positions. And we were able to measure the orbit speed and g-force using the accelerometer built on the stat hat, sense hat board. With all of these different components that we put together, we also had to keep track of the satellite orbiting Earth. It's obviously, it's in a lab, just sitting on a table. So we had to simulate the actual orbital movement. So we tried a variety of different open source software the best one that the one that worked the best with our setup was cesium cesium orbit software 
And as you can see in the pictures, we were able to configure two different views. You can see from the satellite view to Earth, and you can see as it moves around the world. And whenever it would come into a range of this ground station, you'll be able to see the pre-configured GPS location that we would choose to be able to simulate that communication window opening and closing. And as that orbit would occur, that's when we would transmit messages back up and down from the ground station to the satellite. Once we have this test bed working well and functioning the way we wanted it to, we started to move towards coming up with different attack scenarios and trying to come up or find different vulnerabilities that may be of interest to try and make sure that a satellite that a researcher might send up to space, you want to make sure that it doesn't happen to you, lose access to the satellite for whatever reason. So we tried a variety of different attacks, man of the middle attacks, denial of service, spoofing that would interfere with the payload, as well as instructions that would send configuration messages to the satellite. We would try to mess with those. We also tried to attack the hardware itself to see if we could cause it to fail and no longer function in space. So we looked at this in a variety of different ways. We looked at the communication, the software that we were using, the hardware in the operating system. We used a variety of traditional scanners, packet sniffers, and so forth. I'm going to give you an example of one of the different scenarios that we came up with. This was a man in the middle attack scenario where the malicious actor with the correct transmission bytes, we were able to send a configuration message to the satellite orbiting Earth to make it think that we were the ground station when we were not supposed to be. And essentially, we were able to change the satellite IDs and take over on that communication. So this created a lockout scenario where the satellite orbiting Earth would ignore messages from the legitimate ground station and only listen to the hijack ground station. And as you can see, we were able to take pictures in the bottom four images. You can see those were the normal pictures. And then we were able to essentially take over and change the images being sent back to the ground station. So we were able to either modify or withhold data or even change the data being sent to the real ground station. Some other attack scenarios that the students were down were coming up with ways to mess with the Raspberry Pi system that ran the ground station as well as a satellite. They had a lot of fun doing this. Most of this worked pretty well and we we're creating these different experiments that we might be able to in a more real world scenario. And after creating all these different attack scenarios, we spend time looking at ways to try to prevent different things that we created. And we wanted to make sure that those things can't happen or it would be harder to do. One of the obvious things was to us was to come up with a way to do command validation. There were some commands that we were sending, maybe with a typo or in a in a wrong order that would cause a satellite to get confused and actually crash. We also created timeouts to prevent the satellite from indefinitely waiting for the ground station to acknowledge messages because this is a TCP communication model that we created. We also implemented a help check where it would monitor the system and report any unusual warnings and then send that back to the ground station. <clears throat> so by building this model, we were hoping to avoid the need for other researchers to launch satellites up to space and realize that something's vulnerable or broken and not be able to fix it without having to launch another one. We really want to reduce the chances of compromise or functionality of those satellites. And we, with this research, we're hoping to 
reduce the likelihood of having to replace what he already launched and recreated this baseline testing system with this model to be able to improve the overall resource posture. We published all of our efforts with this paper, the IEEE International Conference on Cybersecurity, Cybersecurity and Resilience last year. And um, you can find the paper on there and uh, talks about the model in more detail and the different parts that we put together to make this happen and more detail about these attack scenarios. I'm going to pivot over after we did all of this stuff, creating the model, we kind of shifted our efforts after we lost some students from graduating. We got some additional students on the project. We started to focus on creating a lightweight program that can monitor and protect satellites that are orbiting Earth. We found that the commercial off-the-shelf products that provide that level of security were too resource intensive. So we wanted to create this lightweight program that can run and essentially protect the satellite for potential threats. A variety of different things we incorporated, including a scanner for malware, monitoring different metrics of the file system, network checks, secure configuration, and so forth. So these different attack scenarios that we came up with we found some mitigation strategies if we wanted to implement those on that small satellite defender to be able to protect the satellite from threats. I'll go in more detail about what we monitored. So we monitored all of these different metrics, essentially creating a baseline of known good of what is normal for a satellite. And once you have that baseline, we would collect all this information and send it back to the ground station for anything that may be unusual and have the ground station operator to further investigate and figure out what may be going on. With that small satellite defender work, we submitted a app stat to the Cyber Recon Symposium, which was run by the U.S. Cyber Command. And essentially, they assigned us a, a mentor, which was an Air Force colonel, and uh, he worked with us to help develop small satellite defender and focus on creating different experiments. And after that, we, the team traveled to the symposium and presented the work to the director of the National Security Agency, which is really cool. With all of those efforts with the small satellite defender, we were approached by Lockheed Martin to run this software that we created on a actual orbiting satellite. So Lockheed Martin has this eight night team where they essentially create opportunities for academia and other companies or researchers to be able to perform experiments on a decommissioned satellite. And we were fortunate enough to have this opportunity with Lockheed Martin where we were able to run the small satellite defender on an actual orbiting satellite. So we worked with Lockheed Martin. They had their own identical twin of the satellite orbiting Earth on a test bed. And we worked with their engineers to run small satellite defender. And we found that the, the satellite did not work on the architecture that we developed, which was Python, and they needed us to convert everything to Bash. So it was a challenge for the team to be able to quickly convert everything we created from Python to Bash, refactored all the code, and worked with the test bed and Lockheed Martin to be able to get the code to work and quickly deploy that. I believe in a couple of weeks, that's how quick we were working because we didn't know how long it would be until that decommissioned satellite would no longer be available to perform experiments with. And once we have a small satellite defender working with that test bed, we had a session with their ground control team and we deployed small satellite defender on Linus space vehicle orbiting Earth. We collected a system baseline and then we ran this experiment where we would introduce some malicious activity where we would write a bunch of random garbage to different files. 
basically clogging up the system resources in that small satellite defender would collect metrics of the satellite and send them back to the ground station showing that unusual activity for the operator to identify that something's going on. So that experiment was successful and we were able to showcase the success and viability of monitoring a real world satellite using small satellite defender within the small the, um, console available. We had an article published and we also had an additional paper published with Lockheed Martin where they wrote this paper talking about the process of working rapidly with different universities to run different experiments on actual space vehicles that are decommissioning. And in the University of Alabama, we put together this list of experiments and are working on developing additional experiments to be able to perform more of them if we have additional upcoming opportunities, potentially with the SMDC as well as Lockheed Martin moving forward. So where are we today? Right now, we are working on interorbital system tubesats. We ordered these six to nine months ago. It's been a while. They, um, they've been building them and they finally send us the kits. It, the reason why we're now doing this is because we feel like this is the next step in our research. And we're hoping to finish put, putting together these satellites and to continue these different attack scenarios that we've developed and to do additional vulnerability research with actual real world satellites instead of our test bed. And these satellites were about $8,000 each. We have two of them and they're the small size, probably like a, a big can basically. And it has space in there for the payload of whatever you like to add in there, which is really cool. We haven't figured out what we're going to do yet with that, but we are hoping to integrate small satellite defender in those tube sets and to further iterate improvements with small satellite defender. So this one, this image is actually the one we put together in a, one of our labs. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty small. You can see the solar panels on that. and. The TubeSats use a different architecture than the Raspberry Pis or Linus, so we're going to have to further modify the small satellite defender to work with that. So with small satellite defender moving forward, we're hoping to come up with two different iterations, one focusing on the ground station and one that focuses on the actual satellite. And we're hoping to collect all these different metrics to be able to provide a level of security and to have that available for researchers to be able to secure their satellites when they launch into space. These are the different metrics that we're hoping to collect. We're going to pay attention to battery health, system information, and do health checks. We're going to be focusing on satellite specific information. We're going to try to map those out on visualizations for the ground station operator to be able to quickly see and identify some things that may be going on. And we're also going to obviously introduce security to this as well. Program error, chat sums, and so forth. Here are some sample graphs that we're going to do with Octave to be able to plot and visualize the TubeSat metrics that we're going to collect. We're going to show the solar panel charge, bus current, and temperature. We're also going to be collecting information on the positioning of the satellite. If it starts to spin, you'll be able to quickly find that on those graphs as well. That's, that's all I have for you today.